welcome to the uh, <laughs> Iowa Hills Management Committee meeting of uh, May 26. Uh, we did have some technical difficulties getting started uh, with the streaming, but um, Anna Farmer is here. She's our pool manager, and she's just talking, we're talking to her how she came up with the guidelines for the uh, opening under the COVID-19 situation. So, you know. So my first, the, so if you think about like a flow chart of, of my decision making process, my first step was that it had to pass inspection. More than anything else, we have to go, the health department has to say okay. Um, my next step was that um, the most number of people in our community had to be able to use the pool and that the um, rules had to be as fair as I could make them within that, within that and that, um, and that, the, that the things were clear and so that like um there wasn't coming to points where like it seemed like a lifeguard was choosing that this person got to get in and this person didn't get to get you know like, trying to make so i was trying to make everything as as line, delineated as possible so that it was very clear this is how we use the pool this is how i get access to the pool and then my last consideration was budget um obviously i don't know a lot about you guys's budget but i am a member here and i know that that's been a struggle so um things that we could do um, there were some things that would have cost extra funds, and so um, that was kind of some of the stuff. So that was kind of my three steps. It had to make through the health department. It had to allow everyone to have access to the pool, and it had to not really bring about a, a financial a financial hardship. Um, so uh, I started the day the governor announced that pools would be opening. I started working on um, a start of an idea, even though he didn't get the he didn't get the information out for a couple days. So I used um, stuff from other countries. I used uh, gyms, what they had the outline this for gyms and not for the outline before pools and stuff. And I just got together based on what I was seeing at other places and the restrictions there, I got together a basic idea. Once the, um, once the rules came out for the health department, I uh, looked at what I had. There was a couple things that need to be changed. A lot of it was already just the same as what I was expecting. I um, emailed Kevin, who's in charge of inspecting our um, pools. And um, so for instance, for my first, on my first attempt, I had um, divided the pool. Uh, I had divided the shallow end into four quadrants and the deep end into two long ways quadrants. Um, and uh, my, my concept being that like each quadrant was about like 12 feet on a side. And so, you know, if someone was in the middle, that would leave six feet. Um, Kevin came back to me and said, no, like each quadrant has to have a six foot buffer between that quadrant and the next quadrant. So if I was gonna do it that way, there, like because if someone was at the far like if, if there's just a line down the middle and two people meet at the middle they're not staying so i have to have a, a buffer so upon learning that i went back to that again um and my options at that point if i made four quadrants in the shallow end of the pool the area would be very small for a person um i didn't think that it would be a reasonable amount of space for someone water walking or an active child um so I could run, I could have taken the diving board out and run, um, run the buffer down the middle of the pool and then had two deep end quadrants and two shallow end quadrants. And I did consider that, but I know the diving board for a lot of people, that's like the big thing, you know? So, um, so what I ended up with is um, a deep end <coughs> and then a six foot buffer and then two shallow end, two shallow end things with a six foot buffer in between the two shallow ends. So that was the first step, just trying to figure out how I could divide it. Um, my original plan was to divide the baby pool. That was before I knew that you had to have six feet in between the two sections. If the baby pool is not wide enough to divide by six feet and still have any space for people to be in. So that became just a one. Um, so that was before I thought of anything else. My first thing was let's just figure out how to configure the pool in a way that's gonna match with that. Um, so then from there, um, I started talking to people at other facilities, trying to figure out how we would do it. Um, so there were several concepts. Um, one of them is like the walking concept, just like you have the quadrant, a person walks in, they use that quadrant until whenever, if you come and there's no quadrants open, you don't get to get in the pool. Um, you know, if someone's been in the diving well since 10 o'clock in the morning and it's now seven o'clock at night, like, you know, like, the, so one of them is just like, it's just a walk-in, however that happens. Um, that didn't seem from the point of view of allowing everybody to have a chance to use the pool that didn't seem like a possibility um so new albany country club what they're doing is they have their pool divided up um you don't have to make reservations when you show up there's a person that gives you a bracelet with your time on it 
and they write three hours from whatever time you show up and then you can go to one of the open areas of the pool and use that for three hours and then you have to leave and there's someone whose job it is to take the names of the people and give them the bracelets and make sure that they're staying in a quadrant and telling them when their three hours are up um but that still leaves you with you show up and you know if i have a two-year-old and three-year-old and the only thing that's open is the diving pool you know that that's uh, problematic so also new albany has a lot more space <laughs> than we have um an olympic size pool yeah it's huge yeah. um and they have then they also have a separate lap pool um so the why the why is during this opening phase is another one i looked at they're not letting anyone under 13 into the building or into the pool during phase one um they're allowing lap swim only and you're only allowed to have two people per lane um they have a sign up you can sign up on the spot but again they have someone working at the front desk that can handle that so it's not their lifeguards trying to sign up and it's not it's that um in talking to kevin he was really specific if if our lifeguards our lifeguards can't be taking notes on what who people are and what they're you know like our lifeguards need to be paying attention to the pool we can't be doing other things at the same time so what then i and randy will <laughs> i went through a series of stages with randy it was like the stages of grief first i was like i don't think we can open and then i was like i think we can open but i think we're gonna have to have a whole other employee there all day every day to try to figure this out and and um so you know looking at that um so in the end what the pools that have so what a lot of pools have to consider that we don't have to consider in quite the same way is that people have to buy a specific membership to be a part of that pool for the summer so like if you pay eight hundred dollars to get to be a part of the pool you know like it's a lot of places have clubs that that's how they do it so um so for instance that puts a little bit of a different like um sometimes if they do that so um the northwest swim club what they're doing is like when you buy your membership first of all they're having to limit their memberships but then like you can say that you can sign up and say i'm mondays through monday wednesday friday i'm a morning person tuesday thursday i'm an evening person and those are the times that you can come and they're there's they're also doing the stagger but but they're doing it a little bigger blocks of stagger but again they have people on staff whose job it is just to take care of all of those considerations so um in the end the way that seemed to match up the most with what our staffing possibilities were was um a registration a signing up for a spot in the pool um because we have to clean everything has to be disinfected every two hours um what seems to be working for other places that have started with this is um to have a 90 minute session then you have 10 minutes to walk everybody out 10 minutes to spray everything down and 10 minutes to bring the next group of people in and then they get their 90 minutes in the pool that seemed to be what works the best for people that have done it before so um so you know that's where i how i got to that um so some of the things that you know some of the thoughts like considerations that we're trying to think of is like what do you do if you have a family larger than six people because we can only have so many people in the pool um people who've emailed me that i've said you know just sign up for a time shoot me an email chances are the other people signed up for other quadrants aren't going to have the full numbers and you know you can go ahead and have your family of eight you know we're not allowed to have more than 10 people in any one quadrant but you can go ahead and have you know your family group in that quadrant just just let me know so i can figure out the numbers and make sure we're okay um you know one of the questions is obviously like if you have kids that are like um older and younger like how do you deal with that you know I, and i get that because i've got three kids so I, I do understand that um so for instance uh some of the suggestions i've made is um perhaps uh the baby pool is not getting signed up for a lot if you want the baby pool maybe and you've got some older kids maybe you sign up for a shallow end spot at a time where the baby pool is not signed up for and if there's no one there then there's not any problem with you being able to go back and forth between the two or for instance the last evening slot although it's shorter not a lot of people have been signing up for it so sign up for that last evening slot and at the moment like the almost every day that last evening slot has no one in it at all <laughs> chances are you're going to be able to go so see that these are some of the type of resolution suggestions that i'm trying to help when people are asking me questions and i am so sympathetic to how different this is from what people are used to doing i mean i get it like you kids you know i've got teenagers and i'd be like oh my gosh just leave it go to the pool you know like like I, I i need to make lunch you need to go i get how i really do get how different this, that is and i really want people to know that i really like that it was really like a, a process of 
really like just trying to find the, the solution that was going to work in a way that made sense for us and would allow us to open because frankly a lot of pools aren't opening this year lancaster is not opening this year westerville worthington like tons of pools just aren't hilliard gahanna because they just Over can't and yeah a lot of, lot of um because they just can't find a way to make it financially possible with the restrictions that are in place you know if you're if you're a lot of these places they're looking at like an 82 percent re reduction in load of how many bathers you know how many people they can have at the pool at the time if you're charging for memberships and you're telling people you know like you're having to cut by 82 percent that's just not possible so so uh, you know um a lot there's a lot of that <laughs> going around right now so um the thing i think that's important that i think maybe people aren't understanding is that it's not actually um the, the where the concern comes and where the distancing comes in the pool is not actually traveling through the pool water um unlike polio and some other viruses covid hasn't really shown itself to be super happy in the water but if you think about what it's like when kids are in the pool and they go in the water they come up like you know and they, and they come up and they're they're pushing their, their hair out of their face or they're splashing each other it's that airborne right that's where so that's why they're that's why they're asking for that buffer it's not because i'm worried about the germs are going to float across the water right. to somebody on the other side it's that what's going on in the air and so i think um a lot of a lot of the questions i'm getting are like you know if it dies in water how come we have to have spacing in the pool and so this is just coming from the health department um that that, that it's not the concern is not the travel through the water the concern is travel through the air um so the other thing I know is a question, and I, I want to talk about how, like, why is having a cutoff time for the signups every day? Um, I know that that's, you know, people are like, well, what if I decide I want to just go? So some of my friends um, who've had pool systems like this, some of the things that they've run into, um, for instance, like, I have to print up for the lifeguards who signed up for every day. So let's say no one signed up for the 3 o'clock slot. And then um, at 3 o'clock, two families show up. And they both say, I signed up at 3 o'clock. No, I signed up at 3 o'clock. Well, the thing is, they probably both signed up at 3 o'clock, but probably maybe for different days, or there's just a confusion there. But the lifeguard doesn't have any way of knowing which one is their spot. And they don't have, like, um, two of our lifeguards have Sprint, so they don't get any phone service at the pool, or, like, data or anything like that. Um, and so there's no way for them to, like, confirm that. Another problem um, that has been run into is, for instance, let's say you just let people walk up and they see there's an empty spot and you know it's, it's 20 minutes in and you go ahead and let them in because somebody didn't show up the problem is is like let's say then 25 minutes in the family who signed up showed up and maybe they were getting their kid up from nap and they had a blood, blood diaper or whatever happened that kept them late so now you've got a family in the pool and you've got a family who was actually signed up for the pool yeah. and you're telling you know at that point you're again the lifeguard is again not watching the pool in order to be talking to the people it, you know you need to leave or you're you were too late or you know that that that's another thing that has come up from people who've had systems like that um so and then the last thing that has to be considered if you have a system where it's just like whoever shows up if there's empty spots if we're only allowed to have 27 total 25 with one lifeguard can be in the pool at a time 27 is our spacing right but but for life like as far as lifeguarding goes if there's more than 25 we have to have two guards there so let's say you have 21 people in the pool and a family of five shows up and you tell them i'm sorry i've got 21 people in the pool you can't come in and then a family of three shows up and they walk on past and get in you know that even though the logic of why the family is going to be like oh, i don't like that's only two more people what's the problem just let like my, the experience that people have had in dealing with this situation is that the clearer and more clean cut the rules can be the easier it is to enforce them because it doesn't come down to people coming into the pool feeling like individual lifeguards are making choices based on who they like or who they know and that kind of thing and um and so it just it just that's the reason for that so um i mean this is again this is not something i came to easily again i have kids that like to use the pool trying to think about how that's going to happen you know I, i'm trying to consider from that i know a lot of people depend on this pool when it gets hot in the summer we don't have air conditioning so there's days where that's our <laughs> that's our escape i mean i get all of that so so I, I do want to let everyone know that i did like really um really kind of like it was a very hard like it was you know the, the process was a very it, like there, there was a lot of concern that I did going into it and worrying about it and trying to figure out and I, I met with Randy on multiple occasions I, I talked to Kevin the health department guy I went back he came back he told me this he told me that you know I talked to people opening pools I talked to people in other countries who had already opened pools and found out what went wrong 
when they open their pools. Um, you know, just that kind of thing. So obviously nothing, I'm human and that's never perfect, but I do think that like, you know, just knowing where I came from and what my decision making process <coughs> is. And, and I get also that if you have questions and someone comes to you and says, well, I don't understand why it's like this. If you haven't heard from me, you don't understand. Like you can't tell them that. You can't say, well, this is what the other option was and why we couldn't do it that way because you didn't have that information. So that's why I think it's important that you understand like how, how I went about trying to trying to process this and figure this out. So, um, I'm glad you did it. Yep. <laughs> First off, thank you, Annie, for a tremendous amount of work in this. I do have one question. Yeah. So what if there's like a, a open spots, like nobody signs up, if somebody's there using the shell, and can they stay um, to use that next available spot because nobody signed up? Or so I, so I don't think we're going to let that happen because we have to completely clear everything out and clean in between. Um, but I do think that like so for instance if there's an open spot and you're you have another spot in the pool at the same time you can use a, the part of the pool that's not being used by that open spot so for instance if you want to have most of the pool to yourself come from that seven to eight in the evenings because we have almost no one signed up for those spots and then you should be able to use both a deep end and a, one of the shallows and that kind of thing again I get that that's a shorter amount of time but you are getting more pool space so hopefully that helps a little bit with that um uh, what, generally, our highest use customers have, have and our most like frequent the people who use the pool who truly use the pool the most is the water aerobics people. The water aerobics people, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's rainy, it doesn't matter if it's cold. They're a hundred percent. They're always there. They're there from the very first day we open to the very last day that we close. So I did take special considerations when working, um, and I worked with Ginger on that, and um, because we had to limit numbers. She shortened her class a little bit, and we're offering two classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and a class on Tuesday, Thursday, um, to try to let everyone have a chance. Because those people, uh, honestly, if you wanted to look at who was the true supporters of the pool, those are the ones. I mean, families come, and family, yes, there are people who enjoy the pool. There's kids who are there during the day. But those really are the group of people that are our core, our hardcore, like, always there people. And so I really tried to make sure that they were taken care of when we were doing this as well. So. What about guests? So the rule by the health department is that it's supposed to be a single household. They're not supposed to have guests with them. They're supposed to just be a single household. Um, obviously, like, my guards can't be, like, trying to determine who lives with who and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make the people understand that that's what the health department's saying. Um, it's unlikely that the health department, upon peering at our pool, will be able to tell the relationship of people in the pool and give it to us. So one of the things we really have to think about is because this has become so politicized and people have thoughts on both sides of it, um, I have a friend who's a hairdresser, and in the first week she was open, she had three times that the health department was called reporting that someone in the hairdressing facility didn't have a mask on. And one of those three times, um, she was actually, the, the facility was closed. She knew it was her because she was cleaning. She was there by herself, and she knew that it was her, you know, when they called. They called within minutes after it happened. Um, so knowing that that's the case, if the health department, if someone sees us not in compliance, and they take a picture with their phone and email the health department, that's really bad for us. And the, unlike, um, so we actually could get shut down. Um, we get a warning, and then we could get shut down. Um, if we get shut down, then we have to resubmit all of our architectural plans to be allowed to recertify the pool. Um, and so I don't know if you guys know Geneva Hills, which is um, like a little ways away from here, south on 33. It's at a campground. Um, three years ago, they lost their pool. They had two failed inspections over the summer, and it took them three years to get their pool back together. If that happened to us, we would lose our diving board because our pool is not 13 feet deep in the deep end and we're not allowed. The only reason we still have a diving board is because it's grandfathered in. So if we had to resubmit our plan, we would, not, we would not be allowed to have it. Um, there's also some stuff in the pump room that probably would be pretty expensive that would have to be upgraded based on the new, because the pool's like almost 20 years old. And as long as we, are, as long as from year to year we maintain, we can keep all that stuff grandfathered in. But if we lose it and have to recertify, then we have to go by whatever the most modern rules are, and that could be really painful for us. So one of the things is like, you know, it's super important, like whatever people feel about whether it's right or wrong or whatever for the, the thing, it's really very black and white. We either are doing it right and we get to keep our license or we're not, and we have a chance of losing it. And it just takes, you know, two people over the summer text, sending a picture on their phone 
saying that we're not doing what we're supposed to do and that could be that could be enough so I've got a couple questions or concerns for you so yeah. you, you commented about lifeguards not having phones that would work what do we have for communication at the pool then? we have a landline um, so if we have to call 911 there's a landline that's um, over by the guard room I've, I don't, I've never been there. Okay. I was running late tonight. I was going to run up there. Look, I've never okay, been yeah. there. Yeah, no, no, no problem. So, um, but you made that comment. And I, you know, so the first thing I was thinking is, you know, uh, that was important. So if we have a landline. We do. We have to have a landline that has to be certified. I guess that's something. And I guess my next concern is we got to make sure that we're not putting our lifeguards in a police action state. Right. We've got to make it very clear to them that they're not there to point fingers and because they don't need that right. they're, they're not getting paid enough money to put up with belligerent people and that's why i was concerned right you know, absolutely we and we've already i've already talked with all the lifeguards that are coming on board um you know the uh, that but that's honestly another reason why i think it's so important to have really clear rules because then it doesn't depend on the lifeguard um judgment it's just this is the rule you do or you don't you know like we just so, have to ask membership to, to to respect it i mean obviously again, these aren't your rules no. these are not our rules these right and, and i mean the lifeguard you know we deal with people drinking at the pool and the lifeguards have to to deal with people that are drinking and aren't supposed to be drinking at the pool you know um the number for security is posted in the lifeguard room and there is that landline phone right there for the two that that's phones don't work out there um so there's normally know, one or two on duty one sometimes when we have 25 so in order what happens what has happened in the past is that there's been an overlapping shift in the middle of the day because that was typically when we would get 25 or more people um with this system we would not have more than 25 people so it's just one at a time they overlap for about half an hour um in the past when they've had problems um again one of the big problems that we've had is with people drinking and uh, um and being a drunk at the pool and they, they need to be asked to leave and you know you can imagine that a large belligerent drunk person is is uh, not a, the most um comfortable situation so in general what has happened is that um when the lifeguard blew the whistle for their break they just went into the guard room and called security while they were in the guard room and then just went back out to the went back out to their chair and let security come up and and deal with it and, and so i'm kind of suggesting the same process for them with that if they run into problems that they I don't anticipate any problems, but it just needs to be clear to them to protect themselves and don't oh, put yeah. themselves in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no. I mean, that was a big, that's a big concern of mine. Because, you know, these are a lot of these are younger, especially female. You know, like, this is this, this is definitely a concern of mine. It's always a concern of mine, though, because we do run into problems. You know, somebody's vaping and the sign says no smoking, and they feel like, you know, that, that that's not our job to tell them not to vape or not to smoke in a pool or whatever. So. This is something they actually deal with problems on a pretty regular basis and um so we try to develop strategies for how to deal with that without having them feel like they have to be confrontational or in a way that puts them in any in any hazard or jeopardy and they all know it says in the guard room if at any time you don't feel safe for any reason call and it has a security number so i try to encourage them as much as i can to, to do that if that's what they feel so well thank you anybody else got any more questions Appreciate it. Yeah. So thank, thank you for, for coming. Yeah, for sure. Expert. Um, I feel like I know a lot more about what <laughs> we're doing together. Yeah, I mean, for uh, sure. You know, definitely feel free to ask me if you want like questions. I know I went over a lot of stuff, and if you didn't, you know, like if there's something you thought you remember me saying that you were trying to figure out or whatever. Um, hopefully, like the documents and stuff I gave you had a lot of information that would help you. Um, if you get a chance to look at this if you want any changes to it before we send it out if you could let me know and i'll, I'll ask amy to to make changes to it um the infographic that's pretty good but yeah, yeah so I I okay i'd only so. encourage you to you know stay in touch with randy yeah so if things don't work well and you want to make improvements and changes as, as you know experience always informs the process yeah yeah and randy's yeah, so always there been, things that you think yeah. would be better and we all we all do the best we can yeah. we start off with some people we always learn yeah and you know process. stuff may so change over the summer do better yeah really yeah please share with us yeah I think we want to be supportive of you thank you i appreciate and, that yeah randy's always been super supportive of anything coming up at the pool i you know I, I always feel like i can come to him with stuff so that's always been good and um you know i mean we could all you know i don't know what the summer's going to bring one way or the other so you know we just have to kind of stay with it and keep keep up with it so um if anybody's having problems signing up with this sign of genius i've done a lot of phone support over the weekend i've talked to a lot of people in person i've uh 
I register people who could figure out how to register. So, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do any stuff like that with anybody who's struggling. You know, feel free, please, to send them on to me. So. I know my wife is there for water aerobics because we should have. Those are my core. <laughs> that's my core group. If, if the pool had to have a people supported, it would be that crew. So, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll uh, kick into the rest of our meeting here real quickly. Um, Randy, you want to run through the numbers real quick? I'll, I'll cover through the um, uh, accounts and the uh, operating analysis real quick. Uh, capital fund total $191,884. Depreciation fund total 163686 Delinquencies as of 415 was 17569 It went up in May. I think probably because of the virus, possibly, uh, to 19,748. Road delinquencies were at 1660, went up to 1700, and that's pretty much just because of the late fees. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, road zones aren't actually due until June. June, yeah, correct. Correct. Right. And, and then you probably see a spike here. I do want to comment now and to echo we are printing the, the goals that we've kind of passed around. So you can see what our current balance is on depreciation, uh, capital, communities, but what our actual goal is, so people kind of understand where we are trying to get to with those those funding goals. Uh, next is a special dam assessment. Uh, we have 101,411 dollars in popular bank. Uh, that was the collateral that we we started off with. Uh, dam repair checking is now at 104,819 dollars. For a total two hundred six thousand two hundred thirty dollars. So we have twelve months left to pay thirty thousand dollars. Right. And we've got more money still to recover. So right. Yes. A pretty healthy situation. The debate. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Our estimation of how many delinquencies and overestimate. They get to what seven percent. Yeah. 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 And well under that. Yeah. Um, I do want to cover the um, operating income analysis. You should have. I just go to the second page, the second, third page is year to date. Um, we're, we're a little off on our revenues, um, small amount on assessments. Um, clubhouse revenue is obviously off quite a bit because we didn't expect to close for um, three or four weeks there, and it's kind of a little slow getting back started, but we're running strong now. Overall, we're doing. We're we're actually doing pretty well. We've generated um, 237,000 in cash this year, these four months. So it, uh, budget changes we made are working. A um, little bit off budget, but that's it's still pretty good. We're, we're the good thing is we're generating cash and, and making some ground on um, filling up, uh, funding these um, these different funds, amenities, and the capital and our, our depreciation fund. are so important. So, um, back in. JJ, can you let back in? Any questions on the operating analysis? I might have left my phone on the chair over there. I just want to make sure I did. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was sitting over there oh, first. So. Just want to make sure. I apologize. No, no, no. Randy, what funds did we? Did we fund this month? And they look like um, just depreciation and they check capital fund. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, depreciation capital. Um, yeah, I had them on a different sheet, I, and I sent them out. I think the ones we funded this month. I didn't see. I didn't see that. Okay. It's uh, possible. I just didn't see it then. No, there was I, a fury, I, flurry of emails. I asked her to send them out. I thought she sent them out. I well, know. looking at the depreciation checking, we put thirty-two thousand in, yeah. four fourteen, yeah. four twenty-seven, another thirty-two, and the standard ten six seventy and five twenty-one. Right. That's five months worth of. Yeah. I don't know more than that. That's seven months worth of. Yeah. Looks like May we made one capital fund deposit. Right. So we made some ground up there. Right. And yeah. Then, yeah, there was one in one, like two in April and one in May. Yeah. Good. 
Okay. Any questions on uh, the, the funding for the amenities and the various funds? April. All right. Uh, news and notes, Randy. Uh, first of all, welcome to Rex. Uh, it's first meeting with the management committee of the Hideaway Hills. I'm glad you made it be able to make it. And so, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'll be out of the office uh, next week, for, uh, Friday, Monday through Friday, be back on the following Monday. Um, talk to the Fairfield County Health Department uh, on catering. And uh, pretty much anybody, well, of course, any caterer is going to have to be licensed. Uh, but they, if they want to use our kitchen, which a lot of them will, uh, and I talked to uh, uh, lady name Kitts. Um, I talked to her and her husband Billy. Um, that most of the kitchen, most of the caterers will want to use our kitchen, and if, indeed, if they do, they will have to have a special permit in order to do that. So we'll have to keep that in mind uh, when somebody contacts us about catering, and plus. Uh, then I think I sent out all the other information about that um, as far as what, the, what they were going to need and her, her questions to ask them about li or liability insurance and that type of thing. I sent so, that out to you folks. So the, in essence, they're not using our license. Correct. <coughs> so the only issues we are really kids. have are like them cleaning it. Correct. But not damaging it. Right. Or yeah. imaging or not yeah. that. Right, right. Which is all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Would we still have to be inspected though by the health department? You'd be something Yes. Yes. As long as, as well, when I talked to him, he asked me if we had already paid for this year's uh, permit, a food food vendor permit. And I said, I wasn't really sure, it was right there on the wall behind me. He was, I could turn around and look, because he didn't have a record of it. I looked in there, and there it was right there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we'll still have to do the permits. We'll still do the water samples. They did a water sample today, which which happens quarterly. Uh, we had to have a water sample. You probably heard me tell Anna, we had a water sample for the well at the pool, which is something they just started last year. Uh, but so all that's taken care of. EPA called, they wanted us to sample early for some reason or other. And the, the, the labs are kind of discussing with EPA because they're asking that, and so they have to hustle when before just you just needed to do it before the end of the quarter. So anyway, that's taken care of. Uh, but that's pretty much it as far as catering. But the, would they come back in like all the things they've done before, all the cleaning cleaning surfaces and all that kind of stuff? You mean the health department? Yes. Well, if we have catering, yes, well, they, they will. So we'll otherwise, your tech inspections because of that activity. Correct. Okay. But would that inspection only happen during when they're here working? Not uh, necessarily. They could just come back at any time. They come back at any time. Yeah. Matter of fact, well, they've often, it appeared, tried to come back when we weren't in operation. Right. Right. But right. I mean, I would say a good two thirds of the inspections were when our people weren't here. Right. Randy had to yeah. deal with it. Yeah. Or one of the girls. Yeah. Yeah. So where do, where do we want to go with it? Do we want to allow catering and use our kitchen? It seems like to be a nightmare trying to let them use our kitchen. I, I is it the risk of theft, the risk of damage, the risk of good inspection? I would rather not. I think there are caterers that can do it without our kitchen. Yeah. But oh, I thought so too. Um, they yeah. They have the hot boxes and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really, just exposing ourselves to the theft, to the damage, and then what if an inspector comes in right after these guys walked out and mm -hmm. it just wasn't clean or something was there, something was damaged even. Yeah, they damaged that dishwasher that's in that present on the dishwasher. Yeah, that's right. I'm, that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Anybody got any different? Not until I see a real rational reason why we need to. I, I would I'd like to guess where we come up with a policy that says, you know, our opinion is that we, we're not going to open the kitchen, but we will allow catering with a certain liability 
to use the facility. So I don't have a problem with that. I as long as they're self-contained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to yeah, exactly. they have yeah. bring the food in. The front door is an access one. I mean, Randy, in the walk-in, we have all the beer liquor for both locations still sitting. There's in some that? beer in there, yeah. There's no liquor in there, but there's some beer. True. Yeah. Sorry. Wine, yeah, yeah. And then not though, the, right? Huh? Yeah, but if we opened yeah. it up for their use. I'm saying they have access to that. Correct. Well, we wouldn't let them have access to it. And I'm not I'm not arguing with you, Dan. I'm just saying, as we look down the road, I'd like to see, do we have any interest in caterers wanting to do that? Well, they're possibly one of these coolers. Yes. That's that's my point. That so way, how many coolers do we have, and can we can we segment one off and lock it that it has our inventory in it? Well, yes. Well, yes. We, we've, all, we've got... Um, Two, uh, we've got a double door freezer and a double door cooler. We've got a single door freezer and a single door cooler. Then we've got the veggie coolers, which are the under counter things. Then we've got the walk in. Right now, everything is cleared out with the one double door freezer and the walk in. So everything else is available to them if they if they wanted something like that. And typically, they will. Maybe it's an opportunity that if we have a caterer that comes in like this and uses a facility. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm condoning it, I'm just saying if we allowed that, then from that we could get someone that may want to run that kitchen, Possibly. rent our kitchen, rent our facility, in order to expedite getting the lodge back open. We could keep the lounge side of it, the alcohol, beverage sales, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and maybe look at something. And I don't think it's ever going to be a full-time thing, once a month, twice a month, but we don't even know if there's any interest. So I, right. I, hate, to, I hate to slam the door shut on it right now, Yes. until we look at maybe all the possibilities of it if it's if it's a door that's cracked open that we may be able to get the lodge open and get butts in the seat again i mean it's it's their cost their food cost their labor costs well you're just making a, a supposition that we could find a third party to run it well, I, I'm whether saying they're a caterer or not maybe. yeah yeah but, but at the same time we're not going to come from a caterer we are not limiting that facility. we're just saying Okay. Somebody wants a party and they want a caterer, we're saying, okay, but they can't use the kitchen. I, think I, wouldn't, the want, I wouldn't want to see that be a limiting factor, I guess. And I don't know what it takes to inspect it and clean it. I would happily volunteer if somebody could train me what needs to be done and work with the health department if that happens. Mm -hmm. But in my past experience, the only time we ever had an inspection was ever was during that event if it was something big in my past. Yeah. It would be the day of that event. Yeah. They would never come back and hold us liable two days later for something that would occur there well, if we're not operating the kitchen. Right. It would have to be back up to standards prior to them using it. Yeah. Because they would be inspected as yeah. if they used the facility under their their license. That's that's really not the way the health department shared it with me. Yeah. Yeah. It just, seems, back, yeah, I just seems odd how, well, they, does. How, how they could come back on us if we're not operating the kitchen. Well, yeah. It's our kitchen. It's our kitchen right now. It's our kitchen. And it's our life. We have yeah. our life. But we're not serving food out of it. Correct. How about we do this? We'll see how it goes with not allowing the kitchen. If we get a quick pushback, we can revisit and see if it's really worth it economically to open mm -hmm. our kitchen. My, my, I'm worried about the theft issue. I'm worried about the damage issue yeah. and the cleanliness. The, they leave it the way they found it. You know, well, they, we could lock our supplies. I don't know that someone's going to steal spoons or a mixer or something like that. Mm -hmm. Damage to property. And again, it would have to be another legal determination, you know. And then they're going to say, "Well, it was broke before they got here." I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if we had, if we had it open today and operating it, the dishwasher broke. The dishwasher broke. Yeah. It probably wouldn't have been because somebody did something wrong. It just because I was up to. Yeah. They're just trying to keep an open mind by getting the lodge open. And if there's somebody that really jingles their chain here, and you, you don't know somebody that's in COVID nineteen now and and loses their brick and mortar facility. Could have had a good business or a following wanting to come in and do something like this. This might be an opportunity for us to do that. So I just didn't want us to slam the door on the whole idea. Of my and I think exactly, that's exactly right, Steve. And if that opportunity comes up, I hope we're smart enough to figure out to do that. I mean, literally, we're not putting this in no. as a code no. item for it has to get voted on. It is just it. I mean, our policy. If you will. Up no, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, any more discussion? Cool. Really? Uh, Lincoln Lake, 
uh, Lane, know how that sign's been ordered. It should be here next week or so. We'll get them mounted. At, uh, get them mounted at both ends. So we're not closing that road. We're just putting it up there so there's no outlet. I had somebody call me today and ask me about that. As a matter of fact, I said, no, we're not closing it. It's just, it's just a no outlet sign. Uh, mosquito traps. Um, health department was in today. Uh, setting setting the traps. They have no interns this year, uh, so they will not be testing for the West Nile virus. They're just going to be setting the traps, catching the mosquitoes, and I don't know what they're going to do with them after they catch them. <laughs> what are they going to do? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do after they catch them. That can pretty much be saved for right we have mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, the, We're the, the, the no, yeah, the number of so get bigger traps and draw them. I think so, okay, in a that. certain amount of time. They got to tag. Speak Egyptian or what? Yeah, they got to tag. Yeah. So and, and so that's all you see that. I mean, they're yeah. They still want to set the traps. Just what they do, they only leave them there for a day. So they count the number that they catch, and that gives them an idea. So, Where are they doing that again? Uh, they're doing it down at the dam. They're doing it at the maintenance. Uh, they were setting them up maintenance when Steve and I were down there. I set two of maintenance. As a matter of fact, they're, they're setting them up uh, towards the little lake, uh, the pool area, okay. and the chapel area. So yeah. I think they're setting four, maybe five. Something could change, maybe. Yeah, possibly. But I can. You know, what they're probably saying is they don't do the testing. That's probably the hard cost of it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. I had have no requests for expenditures this month, so that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, Memorial Day weekend review. Uh, I sent out a whole bunch of incident reports. You probably, probably, folks probably saw all of those. Um, we had our one friend that wasn't able to use the restroom at the uh, out on the golf course, um, but that was that was there wasn't any real serious. Issues. No, actually, I was pretty happy that it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. fairly tame for a holiday week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How, how was the um, generally the stress on security? The security? Um, because it looked really busy to me. Yeah, it, from my band. Well, yeah. with Blake was a mess. Yeah, with with the weekend, uh, with the packages. And with the with the lake issue, it was really stressful for security. Very stressful. Um, I think the last I heard, they got in 180 packages just today. And uh, I sent out. Uh, I think they were. Did I send that out to all of you? How the number yeah. of packages yes. for last week? And they've gone out. No, I would like to keep seeing that too. By the way. Okay, it went up. It went up 50 from the week before. It's been going up gradually for the last four months uh just just we got 40 percent of last week today uh, yeah just about right yeah, yeah. yeah. And almost 200 packages today. yeah i'm just telling you guys we we we're hopefully it'll go down as the virus concerns go down but i will wager our count average count has just gone up 10 percent Permanently. Yeah. So, I don't even see it going down much after the. Hmm. I think people are just kind of not wanting to go to stores. Right. Yeah. You know, they change their behaviors. Yeah, yeah. I never change, and they just. I don't know how much we're going to retain this. Just my yeah, point. Yeah. It just it is going to stay up. We can talk about that down at the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we do need to start coming up with a solution for this, or not right. some solutions. Right. Did we have an overabundance of trash this weekend over what we expected? Did we have complications or uh, I don't know what the normal process yes. is, but if you're you talking about docks, I mean, down and again, I know it generates a lot of trash there, but the it trash cans overflow and piled out. I know the compactor up here this morning we saw that it was there's just people chucking stuff off and just leaving it laying on the ground. Which, yeah. Well, the one down the maintenance there just you couldn't get to the dumpster, so. Uh, and what had happened is usually they came come on Friday, they came on Thursday, so it gave us an extra day of trash uh, plus the weekend. Uh, so what we're going to do, Miranda Laura and I already talked about it. Uh, we're going to get a uh, a Friday pickup on schedule Friday every every week. If we need it before then, we can call it. 
but every week we're going to have a Friday pickup. So this is not the main start empty. Yeah, 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 every Friday. So I mean, just it was kind of the first big weekend, and just kind of some of the stuff. Yeah, saw. yeah. Well, they they came a day early, also, which yeah. they wouldn't have really yeah. needed to. Yeah, yeah. And most people come down on Friday. They you know take their trash out and then the rest of the week. Well, I've said a couple of times. My personal feeling is either way is that it's highest sustained population that we've had. Oh, you know, because everybody, oh, sure, yeah. all the weekenders are oh, down yeah. here. Um, well, they can't go anyplace else. Yeah, yeah, they can't go anyplace yeah. else. Yeah. And so they come here. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen that. I mean, yeah, security, you know, that just yeah. increased tremendously. Uh, so that's the end. And the stress on the lake, you know, we, we were out just for a little bit just because it was so crazy, but I feel so bad for. The guys out on the boat, I mean, they get an air horn, they blow an air horn at somebody, and they just kind of just keep mm -hmm. going. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, we need to get them a paintball gun or I don't know what. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, mean, right. I, I don't know how we can keep, you know, stressing it. And there, there was people going the wrong way around the lake, and we have just keep jumping every in the middle, year. and it's like, Memorial Day weekend, yeah. It, 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 it's the animals, and yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not calling members animals, but they mean like it's well, luckily, that way, we didn't have it's any dangerous. We could have had a serious yeah. injury, we but uh, we did, which was good. And I think it's so on the lake helps helps out. Like and I know we've talked yeah, about, so. you know, improving what you know they have there for a boat and a larger motor for the back of it or something. I like, was money comes available, but I you know, I don't think they should be chasing people down on the lake either. But, mm -hmm. You know, I, I even thought of maybe talking to sewer. I mean I'd volunteer to help too, but Maybe before we get to the fourth weekend or something, with an influx of people coming in again like that, is maybe have some copies of rules, and I'll stand up there in the morning, three-hour shift or whatever, and pass them out to some of the people that aren't here all the time, so they do understand which way we're supposed to go and the no-wake zones and what all that does mean. Because someone could could be in a situation where they just don't fully understand. Right. Right. So on the boat and the boats. So people should have their boats in by now and we start dock checks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the can you have security focus on people's boats that are damaging the docks again? Yep. Because I've seen some that they don't have them tied up correctly, so they're just banging on the dock already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, those are yeah, the assets that you don't want to lose. No, expensive no. assets. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so one one of the incident reports, there's two that caught my eye and uh you know that uh, I, I don't want to say too much directly, but it's the uh, incident where uh, some kids were using somebody's dock. Mm -hmm. Are you going to rate the owner mm -hmm. of that dock also? Mm -hmm. Good. I, I, um, because that is a dangerous thing. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you talked about it before, and I just think that one is. The owner of the dock they were jumping off of? Yeah. So they were there aware of it? We could talk it. I'll, I'll walk you through it, but it's just, I don't want to highlight it for. They're not getting a warning letter, are they? No, they won't. No, they won't. No, 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 I just want to make them aware. Yeah, that, that, that it was. But I think they need to do something about their dock. That's a stand, separate issue. Or yeah. 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 Because I think if I look at it from the lakeside, the steps that the kids are probably using are absolutely dangerous mm -hmm. you know so that's it it's a liability for that owner that died. Yeah. i know but i don't want to hurt it's no, just that's it's really that's what i'm saying somebody get yeah. that line. yeah i think that's the real risk there anything the else question on the restroom and the golf course thing so the restrooms were open oh, mm -hmm. on the golf course yeah, yeah. 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 okay just not the one in the clubhouse yeah the clubhouse is closed right right right, right. 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 and it was 10 30 at night yeah. <laughs> no excuses for me. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that. that was, that was <laughs> no, I just, I just want to be yeah. clear. And the restrooms were open. The other one was the, the log. Yeah. There is a lot in the lake this year, more than I've ever seen. Uh, so we've been pulling it out regularly. Um, is is that a normal maintenance run? That go, they it is when we have that. Yeah. So it's it's something that's being heard by staff. Sure. Okay. They don't have the time to get um, there. Yeah. We'll get to that later. But um, when I saw a 15 foot multi inch, it's I think it's a 24 inch block. Yeah. 
Well, you know, with the storms, it's they, bigger than a telephone pole. Yeah, with the storms they they break off and they float down through the lake, and yeah, so it, that happens. Yeah, it's tied up. And it's typically, can, yeah, tied can you just get it out there? It's tied up. Yes, they have it. No, it's uh, over. I think on the beach, right? No, yeah. it's tied up at the uh, corner of the spillway. Right. Tied well, then there's the one out there at the beach also. Someone okay. towed up. Yeah, is my guess. Typically, somebody will tell us that, and we'll go out and get it. Uh, of course, well, I wasn't aware of this. Maintenance wasn't aware of it. No, no. If nobody no. says anything about it. We're not aware of it. Yeah, yeah. And we we just haven't had the time to go out and look. It's fine. Yeah. I just check it. Right. Understood. It was good to see me, uh, uh, Roger getting some toes in this weekend. Yep. It's good to see yep. him get toes in both. Yep. 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 <laughs> it's a member service. <laughs> JJ, you have anything on this issue? Or? No, I'm good. good. Anybody else? Rex. Yep. Okay, let's move along. Uh, bollards uh, around the clubhouse uh, generator. Uh, now, <clears throat> they are on the print, but they weren't part of the contract from the uh, contractor. So that's something we're going to have to do. I, I'm waiting on a cost for that, and I think we'll probably see if they have any money left over uh, for the, them, that, that committee to pay for that, but we'll see. Uh, if they don't, can we ask for the what's that excess fund or overrun fund? Overrun I don't know fund. if there's a whole lot left in that. If there's anything there, how much? Do, well, we got to see what these dollars cost. Yeah, uh, overrun fund typically has fifteen hundred in it, and I'm not sure how much is. We use guardrail posts. Pardon? Could we use guardrail posts? No, no, not 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 per the permitted uh, contract with the with the county. We have to come in. Steel. Six inch steel. How many square feet? Four. Can our maintenance guys do that? Yeah. But it's the cost we gotta buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's gotta be filled, concrete around it, they've gotta be filled. There gotta be serious specific specific uh, requirements on that. Just so we don't get the guys into these. No, we're not gonna get them into it. <laughs> so once we get a cost we'll, we'll try to figure out how we can come up with the money. But right. can we turn the generator on until Without those, uh, uh, it's ready to go. We could, yeah. What's still to hold up now? They they haven't run a gas line yet. Okay, is that in their contract? I think so. Yeah, I think they do. I don't think the the gas company does. But I think right they now, do thirty-five thousand dollar uh, boat anchor. Boat anchor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> looks really pretty, but number one, I'm worried something's gonna hit it. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid. Number about. two, it's just sitting there. We've had power outages, right? right. Right. Turned open the clubhouse. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you're going to get a cost and around yes. everyone, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, this next one, copier probably had problems with this copier ever since it came in. Is it leased? Pardon me? Is it leased or home? It's leased. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they switched it out with another one of the same same brand, same type, same thing. Have, we're having the same problems. Uh, I complained about it. I even contacted other copier companies, which are standing at ready. Uh, they said that they're going to switch it out, uh, so I'm going to allow them to do that since we've been with them for years and uh, see how that works out. They're trying to blame it on our paper. Uh, it says we're buying cheap paper, and we told them we're not going to buy expensive paper. Uh, they say it's because of uh, no heat in the safe room and, and too much moisture. Uh, it's no different than it has been for years and years. Uh, we think it's the copier. So uh, they were supposed to be switching that out here maybe this week, if not this week, next week. But we've just had all kinds of problems with that fault here. Uh, Christina was trying to run stuff off for ACC. She ended up having to do uh, one copy at a time because the feeder just is not working properly. Pulls two or three copies for it, uh, pieces of paper in at the same time. And uh, so anyway, we're, we're when does our lease expire? Uh, it's actually next month, June. Might be time to see yeah. the other people knocking at your door say. Well, we'll see how this other copier works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you look in the agreement and see if there's a notice period where you have to give them a certain amount of mm -hmm. notice before yeah. We, yeah. we do decide to yeah. pull the copier and get a different company? Yeah. What company? Do they have a Mod one modern brand? modern office methods is the name of the company we're dealing with. One brand they deal with? Well, actually, we've, we've had the Lanier. They're bringing in a Canon. So, 
Uh, the other companies uh, were recommended a Samsung and one other brand. Too. I can't remember what it was right now, but uh, yeah. So we've got them standing at ready. Thunder suck. Yeah. Any questions on copiers? Uh, this next one is the celebration of life. Um, Jim had made uh, suggestions. Uh, I, I contacted, well, actually, Allie called me today. I told her we were going to talk about it tonight. Um, I just wanted to know uh, the suggestions Jim sent out I thought were good. I just, and that's what I'll, I, I told them we were going to have some pretty severe restrictions. We were okay with the 16th or the 13th when they wanted it. Um, but there was going to be some severe restrictions. I he sent that out, out to all of you. I just wanted these to know if there was any other suggestions on what you want to read them. Yeah. Um, uh, pay for extra security at the back gate at overtime rates. Uh, clean up the amphitheater area at the end of their event. Um, do we charge a deposit for the amphitheater? And yes, we do. Um, if they are going to have a number of guests stay in the hill, they are technically required to submit the list to you ahead of time, correct? And yes, that's correct. Uh, I do not want 50 guests staying around for the concert after drinking all day. Uh, now there's a number of them that are members. They can each call in five guests, correct? Yes, that's correct. But uh, the problem was they don't know who all is coming. So we'll have to figure that part of it out. And uh, if the state has any restrictions on public gatherings, they are responsible to enforce the social distancing guidelines. The club has no response, no liability to enforce it. This is their event, not the club's. Um, what is strange to me is the gover governor has opened up uh, 300 member weddings, but he hasn't said anything about concerts or funerals or other kinds of gatherings. So, when did he open up 300 weddings? Yeah, they've done that. We have weddings. That's open now. Yeah. I haven't been to be honest. Yeah. I just checked right before I wrote my email and it was at, still at 10. No, so, he's open meetings are 10. Weddings, it was the whole thing about the opening the churches and weddings. Right. Oh, it was attached to the church thing. Yeah. So, is everybody okay? okay? Yeah, there's my comments. I'd like to hear you guys' comments yeah. and if we can make this happen. Or what did they do about uh, they were going to have liquor for sale? Yeah, they were going to sell it. It's going to be BYOB. Okay. They'd have to have a, a, a license. license permit. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to be able to actually be able to have our concert that night or is that not going to happen? This one, we don't have the ability to know. Yeah, I'm not stuck on 10 people. No, right. Mm -hmm. And they've made that very clear that they're, that's one of the things they're coming the slowest on is the having large social gatherings. I talked to Mike about that, to Mike Burnside about that yeah. today, and I said, that I don't now, no, it's hard to tell what's going to happen by then, by the 13th. Um, he said, well, these guys don't have any other work as far as he knows, and it could be a last minute thing. So. I think that's where it's at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If the governor changes the guidelines, and they could be open. But yeah. So on this celebration of life, anybody? I mean, I guess my only concern is having that many guests here without having them signed in as guests. But mm -hmm. well, I mean, I guess the security guard can stand there and get name and right. get their name and, and give them say, should we take name, license plate, or, or yeah. something yeah. and like restrict them? We're going to put hand tags on. I would want to restrict them to this ta this parking lot only. In that time period. Yeah. When it's done, it's done. Well, yeah. you don't want to yeah. do yeah. it. Yeah. Down Whoever's down. attending, call them. Okay. I mean, they're, they're communicating to someone. Ask for their SVP. Well, they, yeah, they, they put it out on Facebook. You know, like anything else. Well, and then put it out on Facebook, please. Tell us who who's coming and we will. I can add that. Yeah, I can add I, that. I, I'm sorry, just opening up our security gates seems really strange to me. We should have some idea. It doesn't have to be the exact count, but I, I think we'd be good. Because again, well, what we could do is use a different color hang tag, mm -hmm. get their name and license plate numbers, come in the back gate. Mm -hmm. That way we know that security knows that orange hang tag has to be out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should be out. So we're just going to open the gate. How 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 is that going to? No, they're going to just going to open there. the gate. 
the security, security guard back there at the gate. Saying we're with the the so and so party. Yeah. 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 Just for fun, take a shot of their license plate. Well, we'll have that on the camera. Yeah. See that on the camera. I don't think you're, or I don't think Jim's, they're not strict, what you're asking. No, I don't think there's yeah, no way to think they're at home. Okay. Uh, JJ, you go I, I just think if we have the way to, you know, do our best to keep an eye on them per se, whereas at such and such a time, whenever it's over, you know, they have to be off the premises in a certain amount of time. Is security going to be here too? Pardon me? Is security going to be here too? At the at the location? No. Is that kind of theater? Well, I mean, they could move from back there up to here, but they won't be here for the whole time. Okay. Yeah. So it says catering and banquet centers may reopen and hold events like wedding receptions with a cap of 300 people if they can meet required safety protocols currently in place for restaurants. That is very strict social distancing rules and wearing masks and the whole bit. The state's ban on mask gatherings with more than 10 people still remains in place. That's so the all tables way. must be six feet apart with no more than 10 people per table. Undergating is prohibited that likely would eliminate dance floors in those facilities. Self-service buffets or salad bars are not allowed. The phase must be staffed by workers who are actually physically serving the food. So I don't think they could. I don't think they're planning on meeting that requirement. Serving food? Yeah. No, I don't think they were. Yeah. I don't. Were they planning on serving food at all, or just? I don't. Or out of the potluck or the potluck? I thought it was too. That. But that's you're serving yourself. Yeah, that's not public service, food service. This is a closed event. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I want to be accommodating just because it's several members and it's longtime members. And, that's right. Um, the family's mom was a longtime member, so I really want to be accommodating as long as we can do so. Put um, ourselves at risk. Put uh, the club at risk. Yeah, right. So that's what. It didn't say anything about food. They're just going to have the event here at the chapel come down here and have a little celebration and be done. Well, I, I, I don't have any notes on food. Gotcha. Whether they are or not, I don't know. I mean, they're not getting food service, so it's not really any more of a concern than gathering, I guess, yeah. to me. So, I mean, has anybody got any real problems before we give them the go ahead? Um, so they stick to the guidelines? The key thing is, you know, just ask them. Please ask people to do, to do what is right and you know, just remind them of this stuff. You know, we shouldn't be here to bother them about the social distancing stuff. That they're adults, they're on our own there. I mean, we all picked up and gone to Walmart once or twice through this thing. That's their deal. But, I mean, as far as the possibility of somebody that may be drinking mm -hmm. and, and traveling through mm -hmm. our roads mm -hmm. and not be familiar with them and maybe cause an accident or harm to themselves. You know, I think some of that we just got to ask them not to do that. Gotcha. Well, some of that temptation would be there. And our roads are pretty tricky if you're not oh, used yeah. to them. Yeah, they need to come in the back and you know, go back and out. Weeks, uh, I don't see concerts happening. I really don't. Huh? The concert happening. Two weeks, weeks out, I can't see concerts happening. Well, with the concert not happening, one of my concerns is less. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That they oh, sit yeah. here yeah. and they'll be. Yeah, this there's, would no, be there's been no discussions of opening concerts and concerts meetings. I mean, the values were one thing, but it was, you know, completely tied to. Well, wow. yeah. Okay, so we're good. Okay. Yep. Well, the second item, uh, Chip and CEO being bid process, uh, I've called, uh, off, I've met with uh, Rose Brothers from uh, Asheville, and they and they came down, uh, and we talked. Rick took them around, and. Uh, they stated to Rick they did know, didn't know if their equipment would be able to tackle our roads, which wasn't too surprising. Uh, but I haven't heard back from them. And so I called today, left a message for Brian, 
who came out we met with and didn't hear anything back from it. Uh, 2020, uh, the company that uh, uh, Jim McNabb uh, suggested, I called them twice and left messages and haven't heard anything back from them. And I know they're probably familiar with our roads. Uh, Jerry McKee called and talked to him. Uh, he finally called me back and talked to Rick today. Uh, Rick, he wanted to know what kind of estimate we wanted. And uh, so we told him probably a per mile estimate with a, with a, uh, a width, uh, average width of, of 20 feet. So we'll see what he comes back with. And he told Rick, he says, well, I, I know I can't do it cheaper than you guys do it, but we'll see what he comes back with. At least we'll know. And then I'll, I'll push the other two. Those are the only three companies that I knew of. If somebody else knows of another company that does chip and seal, uh, uh, 2020 is out of New Lex or Glenford or somewhere. Not a huge distance, though. Or is that? No, that's not, no, that's not. That's not, probably not near as far as Asheville. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, sure, of course, McKee's has a home here. He's out of uh, uh, Nelsonville. So, Rex, a question for you. So, on this bidding process, is is it always going to be a true apples to apples, or are there corners that can be cut on a bidding process for a chip and seal? Well, there's always corners to be cut, especially <laughs> when you don't have a, a specification. Well, that's why I was wondering: do we have a specification we're asking them for? So yeah, that's hard to know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're asking them to squirt some oil and put rock on, and it's chipped and sealed. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got variable width. It, that's going to be the hardest thing. Is 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 there's a lot of unknown. To, to bidding this mm -hmm. and so you're not going to get their cheapest number because they don't know if their sure. chip spreader is going to climb that hill mm -hmm. they don't know if they're going to fall through and those are all things that that cost them money right um you, actually on a job like this if i was a contractor i'd say pay me the time and materials and you probably get a better number at the end of the day mm -hmm. to say I, I need you for Oh, I need you for eight days or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Get as much as you can. We think the materials are gonna cost this and we'll give you eight days to get as much done as you can and, and that you know, sometimes by the hour you'll get a a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. so Maybe we should ask both. If you can. I mean we'd have to do some work. I don't know if we have time this year or not. Well, here's yeah. the problem. Yeah. We're we're now at the first of June and paving seasons just ready to be yeah, you got to full got born and if they're building tennis courts and foreign right. golf course pathways that's probably a lot better money than our chip. Well actually actually um, we always wait to do ours later simply because we have so much work to do early with the mowing. Uh, Rose Brian said that they do theirs later in the season also. Why I don't know unless it's because they probably their bigger contracts are paving they do a lot of the what I just said. Tennis yeah, court. they travel yeah, three and states so, around. And, you know, once they're done with that, then they'll the new stuff. Like they're really the bread areas. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. new asphalt fours, tennis courts, yeah. golf cart paths, and all that stuff. But that's what he said. They do theirs later in the season too. So, well, so in the end, I think somebody mentioned too about you know longevity. I think you we brought it up. Somebody thought it to you, or, or maybe it was other Jim McNabb. Mm -hmm. You know that we're. Talk to them about a two or year, two or three year kind of contract thing where we could get out of their schedule and do something too. I didn't know. Again, if they know they have steady work, sometimes you think of you're the expert on this one. Yeah. So, yeah. The first thing expense. My question would be: What? Are, you know, we have older equipment, and can they do a better job, or is it pretty much going to be the same tailgating and? Um, um, our spreaders but here's the way I'm starting to think about it just from now that I'm processing it and on the committee um, I think the main roads that have been motor paved I think we want those to be hired out the narrow stuff and the stuff back in the curves and the stuff that's going like this now we can do that just as good as a contractor because it's going to be tough for them to do in fact a really good contractor is going to look at some of that stuff and go I can't do the work that I want to do I can't do the quality that I want to do they may not even touch it mm -hmm. because they'll think you're going to come back and complain to them and they'll mm -hmm. have to keep coming back so um, 
let me put some thoughts together and maybe you and I can speak a bit later this week. Yes, absolutely. Talk about it. And I've got somebody that might want to, that, that we can get a bit on. They're a larger company, but that also may be good. Not Shelly, is it? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, so done good work for us. Yeah. Right. Contention over uh, it, 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 it January last year. very well. Um, I will say we did uh, this main section that we started here and went to the golf course that we did on down. It's been what four, three or four years. They told us we could go five before we had to chip seal it. So right, five to seven actually. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, no, no. this section starts and goes down just past the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Is the oldest. It's the oldest. Yeah. I encourage you to look at it. Yeah. And see what you think as far as can we get a couple more years? I think. Yeah. I think there's there's some places that we need to patch and we need to patch them correctly. Mm -hmm. um, they're not big, but there's a few of them. And then um, there's some other products that are less expensive than chip chip and seal. And because you see we've got some bleeding coming up, that means we're pretty rich down below and we may want to do a little, I got some other things that we can do that won't add that much liquid asphalt to the road and might keep that bleeding down. So we'll get some people out to look at it. So now are you, are you talking about on the motor pave or on, on the motor pave? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Are, are you up to speed on what we have and <clears throat> the material? Equipment we have. And, uh, um, I've seen. I haven't gotten real close. Okay. Um, Might make sense for Randy yeah. to get him and Big Rick together. Yeah, that'd be and great. I think that one because you know he he loves this place. And he he loves to talk about his roads. Yeah. <laughs> and like we might find that to be illuminating. Maybe what we do is is quasi if, if we can let Phillips shoot the oil mm. and we can spread the rock. Okay. And I think that can save us a lot of money on. Hall storage, tanker storage, a whole bunch of stuff. And so it, okay. we'll get after yeah. me and then you know, maybe in the morning I can mean, okay. make it available. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a buzz. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Rex. I do have a tour tomorrow, but it's in the afternoon. I think I'm open in the morning. All right. All right. Pass that, Doc. Okay. Um, I. I could not locate where that path is in regards to property lines. So I called the member today that I that I thought was on it was on his property. Uh, we have the next lot up, and then of course the old Barrett lots are on a farther. But oh, we're on but we were off of theirs because of the dam. We made sure that when the new dam was built, they didn't encroach on their property. So I do know we're okay, and, and we don't. We're not allowed to park up there anyway. That high. So I did talk to that member today. Very nice guy. He said, "I don't know where those property lines are either." He says, "I don't think it goes on there." And I said, "Well, I'm I'm sorry. I don't know if it does either or not. But it's it okay if, for, with you if these folks go ahead and fix it." He said, "Yeah, no problem. Don't worry about it." Okay, get Rex up to speed. There's a there's a trail that people are taking their side by side though. That's awesome. We do it this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Get up to F Dock yeah. and you're parking below that and then so they don't have to walk it all the way across. Yeah. And some of it's on club property, some of it may may or not, but somebody had offered to fix it for free, go right. out there and do some repair. Yeah. So we just wanted to make sure that we had permission to do that. So who who said they fix it for free? Uh, there's a couple people that use the F Dock and also it was on the Lakes Committee. Um, they're not going to use club money. They're going to fix it on their own, and it's just putting some gravel in it. Well, basically, they're going to they're going to pay for it and do the work. So right. Exactly. We just needed to make sure it was okay. Right. <clears throat> and it's just that area that the it's not going up on the dam or anything like that. It's just into that area. There's a bad park. spot up in there that that's that's gotten wet. Uh, they've dug it out because of the, the vehicles going up through there. It's almost impassable now. They're just wanting to fix it. So we've got it signed at the top, telling them where to stop and where they have to stay. We don't. Not to I don't believe we do. Well, it was. It wasn't. Okay. Right. Was there? Okay. Well, there, there was a sign. Okay. Yeah, there was a sign. There was a sign okay. up there to tell us stop. Just after the dam was done, somebody came up there. I'll make sure it's still up there. So anybody got a problem with this? this no, I think it's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. It helps alleviate some of the parking issues that the. That right. Yeah, I was on that stock. I'd be asking for it too. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Ye
start parking in Dan's house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got a question on the parking since you brought it up. So if a spot says golf cart, is that golf cart slash UTV? No, nope, it's golf cart. Just a golf cart. Yeah. Okay. So was, what was the reasoning for that? Our original thing was yeah. golf carts and UTVs. Yeah. And no, no ATVs, no dirt bikes, because that right. we want it to be able to carry several people. So right. side by side is the idea. Side by side and golf carts is what we, mm -hmm. what was our original yeah. thing. So I'm just thinking if, if I don't, they're lined up on top of the dam, yeah. and there's there's five places that says cart only. Yeah, it doesn't seem right that something in the side by side. Is, but it was that wasn't the intention. I don't know. We just made the signs for golf cart, but the intention was side by side for golf carts. Correct. Was the park right? Well, it just says golf cart. Yeah, that's, I know. And somebody asked right. me, "Can we park here?" And it's like, you yeah, can't answer that." So, w with that said, can they? I guess yeah. That was our original. There you go. Yeah. 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 I mean, I need to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. There you go. I thought and that was the, the, the when we set up those that party. Sure you give them a pick up the next time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Get what you know. Yeah. It's fair to know that it's okay. But yeah. hey, no. that was our original. Come up with the rule. Come on. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that, was, that, was, that was on my watch. <laughs> yeah. um, it was always meant. It was not meant to be dirt bike. There was a dirt bike up there the other day. Yeah. No trucks. No the truck. There's right. yeah. full size vehicle can only be the two There's ten two minute spots yeah. Yeah. and the handicap spot. Right. Yeah. It was to maximize the number of small vehicles that we could get up there for folks. So. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the how was the parking down there? Uh, how was it up there? To, uh, this what's week? Uh, I know, we walked up. We parked down below Saturday, but Sunday. I talked to one of my guardians. Guard, you know, just like, just. Packed. Every Saturday. Saturday. I know a lot of times parked down but below and everything was pulled up top. I don't see people really parking in the grass like they did last year. And okay. Because it's kind of randomly so parked it's wherever. gotten better. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they've appreciated we added more spots. And I think they're people being somewhat respect, respectful of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there was a dirt bike in one of those mini ATVs. Yeah. And that's what. Two spots. We really try to discourage because right. it does you, you only carry one person on it. Yeah. Exactly. That makes perfect sense. Uh, next item here, social distancing signs at the beach. They were tore down the first day we put them up. Uh, we made several extra signs, so uh, they were put back up again. Uh, and actually, we really didn't have time to check that out to see if people were actively social distancing or not. No, they weren't. Well, they probably weren't, I'm sure, but uh, well, we begin it's our due diligence. Yeah. Right. right. We put a sign. I think we're not clear. there policing. I don't think security's hassling anybody right. that I've heard of. Right. We're, we're putting a sign up to cover our bases. So we'll put we'll any signs right. up as long as this goes. Right. No police actions are taking place, so it's yeah. we are the Ohio Lake of the Ozarks. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Maybe we can get a TV series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. like, there you go. <laughs> As, the, as long as we get a revenue stream, <laughs> go for it. Uh, this this next item, non-member escort, um, I have, the, there's four lots up there on Chaos. Um, it's, it's right there off of Zuni. Uh, a guy called me, I've taken him around to tour, looking at lots. I guess from what he has told me, um, he has made an offer on those lots. They're member-owned lots, uh, but he needs, uh, he wants to go up there with the South Central Power to show them where he's wanting to put a home and uh, discuss where they can run the electric. Um, this deal hasn't gone through yet, so he's not a member yet. We're looking so, for a volunteer here. Yeah. Now, I may, I may or may not need one because um, <clears throat> the realtor that has that called me about it, questioned me about it, and I told her exactly what I just told you, and she said she does not know of any existing sales agreement. But she's going to find out more information, and if indeed um, there is a sales agreement, then she'd be glad to do this. Because, and, and the reason I'm asking this is because typically I'll do this, but I'm going to be on next week. And so that's why I was wanting somebody to 
babysit this person and uh, because that's what we're just talking about. Uh, up, it's up, up off of Zuni. That's okay. it, it's, yeah, back in that corner? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, not on that real deep dip corner. That's not it. It's where the little road goes back, uh, right across from, uh, just about across from Snokes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Right, 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 right. Well, let us know now. Aren't there yeah. I'll let us know. I'll let you Friday. know before the end of this week. Um, and that's for. Yeah, the we the at least have a sales contract of some kind signed before. Well, I did, I'll take people in that are interested in buying lots. They don't want to buy a lot until they get a. Uh, a soil sample, and, and uh, I said, fine, come on in, do your soil sample, and you know, and then if they buy the lot, that's fine. If they don't, at least we'll have the soil sample. And so, you know, I do that quite often. It's well, just, JJ's not done anything on the fourth, so if you're in the Okay, problem. there you go. Oh, okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> so that's what that's all about. Yeah. Well, my hands fly up for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been a twitch, but yeah. I thought I saw it up there. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Uh, um, it stuff comes up, Randy. Give me a call. Okay, I appreciate it. Actually, or give me a call because we're down here almost all the time now. Okay, I, I live these, over there. So. These are real nice folks. Uh, I took them around, showed them quite a few lots, so, and uh, of course the clover lots aren't the greatest. These are pretty nice lots over there that I'm members trying to sell. So yes, I will, and I appreciate your offer. Uh, food truck policy. Um, I can say speak to that a little bit. So when yeah. it came up at the board meeting <clears throat> that a member wanted to bring have a food truck committee, we didn't realize that it was this clubhouse going to be open. But there has been members requesting some level of food service, uh, food trucks to come in. Uh, clubhouses, I mean, they get it. It's got a small kitchen. They can only serve so much, and we're a little short staffed right now, so we can't be open a lot of days. So. You know, they want to come up with a the idea is to come up with a policy so that the board does not approve every time the you know we have to reinvent the wheel every time that there's a they're gonna bring a food truck into the lodge or up to the lodge for uh, like we open the bar or down front. Um, so what I sent you was some information uh, Eric Lapp had put together. He got some comments from. Uh, Kathy Clevenger and a couple others on that food service committee, and so um, I, I just want to get if, if there's any, you know, what, what your guys' thoughts are on that policy and uh, uh, you know allowing food trucks to come in here and, and serve members. So. I, I don't think it's a bad idea now, but you know, various locations. That's something that. I'm not really sure of. I mean, because I think if we're going to have a food truck in, why can't we do it when we know the truck's here to have the lodge bar open? I mean, breweries do it all the time. They have food trucks there. And the food truck handles the food and they handle the bar. Yeah, I, I'm similar, right? If we're doing it at the lodge, maybe the shelter house, because I can see some advantage, possibly the big lake days. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, where else would you allow one? I don't think that, I think originally somebody set up the dam area, but that's too, but it's not going to work. It's, it's too congested. Too, too yeah. Oh, you mean right up on the dam? Yeah. Well, I've also been on the beach, beach which I'm not for. So, 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 I mean, this would be really nice once we get the lodge open to have this policy in place. So if we have the bar open, we can, like, double edge brewery does that. They bring the food trucks every week. So you can kind of get people in here, spend money, they get some food, they come back, you know, they come in here to eating. And so it kind of supplements a lot. And that's the idea. It's not it's not that, well, you know, we don't eat the clubhouse. It's, it's meant to supplement. Other things. It's not it's competition. It's not doing. We no. don't want to make competition. It's not a long-term thing. The lodge of it is back up, then then this has to go away. But was it understood in that confines that it was just a lodge gap filler, or because it, it, just some of what I've seen written seems to be, you know, it's fairly willy-nilly. So just I, I think just trying to understand. I, I have not heard anything that said that. Once the lodge reopens, that this would continue. No, so we no. didn't. We didn't. We don't. We don't want to compete. 
against ourselves. Right? Yeah. Everyone, like you know, everyone has their own opinion as well as other things. I am not, I'm aware, but <laughs> but I think the main point is, I mean, for I'm committed to opening up the logic. I'm committed to getting the assessment increase fast and getting into and we've got lots of ideas about configurations. But moving forward. I do not want this to become a substitute for the for the laundry of the Yeah, yeah. I don't mind it as a short term stopgap to get people back up here and enjoying it until we get the assessment increase but, and we get our arms around what the budget is going forward. I, I'm just from my perspective, you know, that's what I'm committed to. Yeah. And, and and I said that and I'll say it, you know, until as long as I, I still can in this situation. But if it were tied to the lodge I just don't want any member calling up and saying, well, I'm going to have this food truck up at the lot. No, 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 that's for the pilot. That's, that's for just pilot. what I'm, no, 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 this man, they're, they're still working out the deep. This member went through a board member who brought it to the board to request it, but they could, the point was, how, how do we want to initiate that? So somebody's got an idea that says, hey, there, there will be a point of contact that they have to contact to see if they, we can schedule it. To go that route. So it's not every member bringing a food truck in. There would be a process to, to schedule it. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't worked that out yet with food service. I mean, if I were to have a party at my house and I wanted a food truck there, and it's a it's feeding a, a group of I don't know a hundred people that are coming as a, like a, replace a caterer. That's one thing, but it, I don't think that's what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. No, no. This is a general. Similar to, what they, similar to what they did for the comedy. Gotcha. Right? Yeah, so there's an event here going to be, and, and you know, it may morph into something more active than that or more regular than that. But, but having a procedure in place and having a waiver, having inspections, yeah. making sure the health department's in place, and that, you know, Larry Darrell and Darrell don't bring in, you know, a, a smoker and put it out, out in front. I mean, that's what we're trying to avoid. And, and so people have to jump through those hoops, and then ultimately, I don't, I mean, between Randy and the management committee and the board, there still has to be a process yeah. that says this event's okay. Yeah. But if everything's, if all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, again, this is just my opinion, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, then it becomes a matter of deciding whether it's appropriate as opposed to making sure that these people know what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. the goal, that, I think that's your sense of it. Yeah, I mean, and like, the goal would be once the distancing stuff settles down for the bars that we we move quickly to start getting the bar. Our plan was to open the bar upstairs, you know, in June, and that's not going to happen because we can't. There's not enough room physically in that bar. But we'd like to get a plan together so when we can open that, we can move that, and that'll just be a supplement to help people, you know, to get people into the bar. Yeah, you know, Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. The bar, you know, lodges up, bars open, come up. There's going to be a food truck up there. You know, come in there and you know enjoy some some beverages. So, I think it'll be easier to get a good food truck when they know that there's alcohol sales. Mm -hmm. going on. It definitely helps support them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's all about. I mean, it's a member service, but it is it hopefully we can make it into a thing where we're supporting our lodge. Yeah. So sales. I think we have to get the policy established so we can say yeah or nay. Yeah. Time and it's just and it's a great stopgap I think for now. And to Eric's point, if we can get this set up, we don't have to go through, well, we need to get this one out, we got to get a liability. We got the liability waiver, we got the standards, what's got to be back. Licensing. Yeah. yeah. So we just schedule it, they bring their stuff, and we're good. So, mm -hmm. so does anybody have any problems with information sent out or any additions they'd like to? Mm -hmm. I think we just need to determine the spots, and I guess if it would become a popular thing, so. It, not a big inconvenience, but the ones that were here this weekend, it was good, really good, <laughs> my opinion. But they were running electric off generators, you know. So, and there was some discussion. I thought, in, in short segments, I finally watched the board meeting almost in its entirety. And I know that discussion was there, you know, about a deposit or a charge, a hundred dollars or hundred and fifty. But you know, maybe for safety and not having gasoline generators, if we had a, you know, there's an electric run at the Shelter House or here or something, and you know, that's something down the road. If, if we're still nine months away from this place opening, get some butts in the seat and, and give people what they want and get this place jumping again. And with the lake open in the summertime, it's I think it's a, it's a good deal for these guys to come in and set up down there at that Shelter House. 
Did that with your crowd? I uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> Say it again. I, he actually had a good crowd, and yeah, they did. I think they were they were very happy with the sales they did here. They were they had ten or so different varieties they had, and while we were there, they were they were crossing the stuff off that they were already out of at five o'clock yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I think they probably had a pretty good business. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to tell somebody else. You know, when they go to mm -hmm. it someplace, so we could end up with you know a waiting list on some of these things. But I think again, people's got to decide if we're going to. Let them come in in good nature, or if we're going to have something there to cover our costs. I know that was part of that discussion, and mm -hmm. I think we should get something. We're offering them a pretty steady crowd of a captive audience, if you will, with our community down here. So, do you have a sense if like the breweries charge like double wedge or Stallwater doesn't charge? That's my son's, but uh, because they figure, yeah, they, they got nothing. They got no, I mean, nothing in it, no skin off their back. You, you can, can, but. But if you're paying for their power, I could see. Well, oh yeah, yeah. Like that. that's, that's okay. what I was thinking. That if yeah. we went to something like that, I think we definitely have to have a charge. Plus, if we had the propane and generators and things like that, I mean, and when you're standing right next to them for 20 minutes, it could be annoying. But if you go get your food and go to the bar, mm -hmm. no, no harm. I think it's a good concept. So things are fixed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Healthy. Speed bump installation. I know we had held off on installing those because uh, we need two people to do it and we need them to distance, but the, that's the issue. Yeah, that's I mean, the only issue. When, do we, when do we get around that? Because it's become a it's becoming the summer race by again. Yeah, was well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to not worry about the social distancing with the two uh, maintenance guys together, then they can go ahead and do it. But that's the issue is because they they're in close contact when they put them down. Are they wearing that? Well, yeah, they'll um, wear masks, but still. Uh, no, but I mean, do mm -hmm. they have masks? Are they wearing them? I, I don't know if maintenance has them or not. Uh, but could we ask them to wear masks for this? They when they're down on the ground doing the install, could we I mean, ask them to do that? I think I had a paving crew do my street in Canal today, and no masks, no nothing. Mm -hmm. They were right there. We, we kind of saw a couple from the health department the same way today. Yeah, we did. <laughs> same vehicle. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to put our employees in. No, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think it's speed bumps out too. If it's, if, it's still, if, it's if it's still policy, that I believe it is. Yeah, it well, is. office is, but I don't know about about door and out door. Not everybody's compliant. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If we've noticed. I think we should have them available for them and ask them here. Yeah. I think that would cover us on due diligence. I know they're going to like that, but we have to get these out. We got to get people slowed down. Okay. So. Okay. Well, see if we can get, get them masks, ask them, you know, to wear them, they feel safe enough to do this, so we can get these things out. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, nobody likes these things, but they're necessary evil. Yeah. God knows I never speak, so. I don't think I need that regular sports car. He tried to run a buoy over on the lake, though, because I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real good at that. <laughs> By the way, on buoys, <laughs> did we allow somebody to buy us, or did we buy a round buoy? Like, I just noticed on the north end, there's a little Not just down from you bubble. Ball, ball, yeah. It's really I think it's always been. It looks like a new one to me. I've always noticed so I hadn't noticed it before. It's just real that real low profile type buoy that I, I always suspected they were, you know, a homeowner putting an extra one out or something like that. I I ordered those two. I don't know that they're the permit yet. I haven't seen them. Lately. My only problem with them is is when you change a buoy setup. From the small no. ball to the vertical, no, which the vertical are, are pretty good. These will be the same thing we have out there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's I would well, say you'll see member members will put buoys out too. And they'll be smaller. So yeah, I just I, I don't appreciate those to tell you the truth. No, I'm just really not supposed to put their own buoys out in the lake. But there also was one over by the uh, main uh, work big, working down. At the um, at the ramp at the ramp. Thanks. <laughs> Why knew where you're at? Because I saw you. Yeah, somebody a member puts that one out there. It really shouldn't be there. Yeah. Because I mean, 
your fishing or something. I mean, it's just should be, it shouldn't be a practice to put members to put their own things out. Yeah. But yeah. very does happen. Yeah, it says it's optional for employers to require them of retail construction and manufacturing workers. Face masks. Okay. Make them available. Make them available. Have issues. We'll provide Everybody that we sell masks now. Or CVS. Actually, I just got um, these 50 of them for like 20 something bucks. Mm -hmm. Where at? Uh, Amazon. Oh. And they're delivered. So, I mean, it's not. If they choose not to wear them for their own they you know, yeah. safety, but we have to provide them. Gotcha. I think we should provide them. And, if so, you yeah. need some short term, I can lend you some. Okay. Yeah, if they want to do it this week, I've got. Yeah, we got I don't have many, but I think I do have a box that I just got. So okay. I've got a couple hundred of them now. So. Okay. Uh, staffing, but we're going to put them in the same locations as last year. Yeah, with the exception of Montezuma. Chaz emailed me, said he doesn't need one up there this year. So the member changed back there that was doing the The dry racing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, boy. Dan, uh, staffing, you'd want to bring up? Um, it, it's not, uh, it's more, I, I got concerned when we were talking about overtime and security and, and, and I think priorities in regards to what everybody's working on now during the reduced staff. So it would be really nice if you could share with us what priorities, work assignments you're shelving because I think I heard some that were shelved that I would rather be a priority and so if you want to create a list or okay. so we can review it and then give offer our feedback mm -hmm. I would appreciate it Certainly. so maybe it'll bring to the next meeting a list of stuff that's not necessarily not getting done but not getting done on a normal yep like it normally should be like we sure. need I'm personally into safety issues always should be handled and so um gotcha but i can know when you're in priorities you can think one way versus absolutely sure anything else on that topic or mm -hmm. I think so whatever it again that put it on the yeah, there was something else that i heard on the, the board recording and i kind of i questioned that too i kind of go well, where we you, you brought it up, and I can understand where we're at here. And I was kind of thinking along the same lines. You know, what are we, what are we doing, and we aren't doing. Right. And you mentioned down there, but should clean up the myself, no one knows exactly what that is. Well, and after last week, we're not saying that maintenance is, is screwing off by any means. It's just right. Right. Uh, after last week, the golf course didn't get cut. I think it cut for maybe Friday afternoon, right? right. But, uh, and not much of it. And so, I mean, they were out there working like crazy today. Yeah. There was no. Yeah. A lot to do. I'm trying to get caught up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's knee high. You know, it well, that's, you know, that's you know, uh, Scottish. You know, it's why you work hills, right? Yeah. I think Scottish courses are more. They have their goats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was. No, I, mean, I know they were trying for the leak tomorrow night to try to get it as they cleaned up as they could. So. No, I, I I understand. I just think. We should be in, in a in a agreement on that priority. Yeah, I was going to ask the question. So I because, for instance, I'll, I'll say it right here: is that on the security thing, if we're trying to get overtime available for late, which I do agree, the lakes are concerning with as much boat traffic as I saw. Um, and Roger was out doing his thing, and I. I think even him chasing somebody with a horn <laughs> tells everybody to slow down. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah. Do it for it's an uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, give me a horn, I'll just shoot it out every so often. You know, <laughs> I think they'd get wise to that. But um, the uh, but we talked about when we originally created the structure for this year's budget that you know uh, use one less security guard on third shift. Right. And that would then free up, uh, you know, maybe for the overtime that you would need for the lakes. And that's how I would approach it, but I'm one person on this committee, so. Well, we did get supplemental funding to the, uh, Yeah, but not for the overtime. 
Yeah. No, I mean, we, no, yeah. for the overtime. But, um, good point. I mean, ideally, we wouldn't have to pay overtime, but then again, we were short yeah. people and yeah. scrambling for a holiday weekend. Right. So, I get your point. I mean, well, plus you have to keep in mind that we, people get vacations. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it would be a way for you to add flexibility in your work schedule. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. You have to work security one weekend a month. Oh, that's kind of being on me. I'm not allowed anymore. Jim crunches cars. Ask him how to screw up to get yourself off the moon. Lasted five minutes. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
issue of having enough staff. But I mean, you can see our capital fund that uh, 191 that that didn't even cover the building. Uh, we're probably looking at an easy 250 to 300 thousand to build a commercial building. Um, I might be light on that too. So it just we just really got to the point where we said we couldn't can't do the can't afford that and but we need the space and I mean the shed there doesn't look the greatest but that was meant to be temporary that was supposed to be there for a year and it was going to be up in the golf course housing chemicals and it's still there and it's painted and it's full so um Dan. just one other comment you know, again i read something about people having 65 inch colored tvs again delivered and four tires i think we need to consider you know, not accepting packages of that kind of size because you know when you are ordering something like that, mm -hmm. and you can have it delivered to your home. You just have to go through different arrangements. So, um, back to the, you know, do we have people pay or do we penalize people for dropping um, extremely hard, uh, large things? Well, I have had I had deliveries yeah. to my home, and I well, paid right. for it to be delivered. It was a little refrigerator that one time. Mm -hmm. well, it wasn't little, it was, yeah. But four winter tires, mm -hmm. you know, that's a pallet, essentially, of material. Yeah. You know, what these guys deal with is over the top sometimes. Well, I would still like to go down the road and have a small fee, and you could have a bigger package fee. It's $2 mm -hmm. for a regular package. Anything over a certain size is 5 and that way you, it, it, people can make that decision. Make that decision whether, well, you know, Okay, I'll just keep paying. You know, I mean, it, but it helps us pay for an extra guard or somebody in the office that can you know, yeah, take care of it, but it helps us long term, help us get a bigger facility. Um, I don't have all the answers, obviously. The other, the only other thing I was curious about is the uh, the one the, the, I never remember the old bar and restaurant that was across the street. The dry, dry dock in. Dry dock. They are doing temporary store or doing storage buildings they will be yes yeah yes. are the, is have we ever approached somebody to along that row of businesses to act as our you know well, you did and that. then they can charge yeah if you did that you'd, you'd have to be manned uh, you'd i have understand somebody there well we would have not by us we'd contract right. them but we'd right. have to pay for that service yeah yeah and then the members based on the delivery charge could I mean, it's another way to execute the, just a, just throwing out a couple of ideas, so. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, and this is not meant to be, our membership has kind of come up with this as a service we provide, which it has been, but it's gotten so out of hand that we can't afford to do it anymore. So that's, it gets a little tricky to try to, if we just pushed it out and said, here you go, good luck. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if they would even take that on. I don't know if that's a the amenity that we offer is security. And yeah. if you have a truck sitting in a man or two, when the truck shows up and dumps over a hundred packages off, they're not out patrolling our roads mm -hmm. and watching over our roads. Which is through. one of the biggest pieces that we all like down here. Well, so, you know, so I mean, you can't do both. So uh, two dollar a well, you can't do it. Give us that part time guy for four hours every day to do that kind of stuff, so the other guys can be out and you know run the roads, protecting their properties. And you can't do both if you don't have the assessments right. to pay for it. Right. Right. So I mean, the alternatives to let UPS come in here and get lost a hundred times till they throw a fit and either. Bring lockers in for us. Yeah. No, I refuse to talk to yeah, us. I think the risk we're running going down this path that we're going down is when they see it and they say, well, if you do that, you will have to have your deliveries rerouted to our main stores. So they just will flat refuse or deliver down here. Yeah. And that's my, you know, I had a surprising quick response after you asked and I called and I actually got it the same day response and I said where are you calling from and it was not here mm -hmm. and uh, but um, she honestly said damn this is going to take a while because just everybody is so maxed out they're trying to hire hundreds of thousands of people so mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not throwing 
Not really? Yeah. No. Well, what we're seeing is 100,000 fold for them making all the deliveries because all the orders do. Exactly. It's everybody's issue. So, so I want to give an update. The ongoing package delivery. So, is there anything else anybody wants to bring up? I think we had an executive session. Yeah. I think we had a couple of executive session stuff, so we'll, we'll cut off. Anybody got anything else for the well, the question I had, is, and just it was on one of, and I can't remember if the, the board or the management committee was on the the um, the fund balance of the Save Our Security. Is that what? And the, the fund balance. Save Our Security. So how much is left, and what what's the sixteen thousand as of uh, last uh, last week? Okay. Which will pay about three months. Okay. Yeah. And there's and if that. And there's still some money coming in. Yes, there's still some coming in. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, that was the board meeting. Yeah. Okay. And I think realistically, if we want to run short, we could put that back out again after. So I've had a couple of people ask on that. Yeah, there was there was a certain amount of people that hadn't that pledged that hadn't paid. Board mm -hmm. decided just to let that go. Well, you know, maybe we could put something on uh, a blast or around to say you know. If you pledge, we appreciate you, you know, real kind and nice about it. We don't want to, we're not making a delinquency call here. But, um, you know, yeah. if you make the pledge, we, you know, we're, you know, we'd like you to feel free to please send us a check in. We appreciate it. You know, add something like that. Do you want me to do that? We'll do that. We talked about doing that. I think we should. Uh, no, just, I mean, it can be really nice. It's not yeah. like we're demanding, but, you know, just a reminder if you've made a pledge, we'll do that. your check in. Let's, Please do that. Well, I, I think it would be as part of that. It would be good to, to do it as a thank you to the community yeah. and say, yes. we have good we have brought in total. I don't know, twenty four thousand dollars or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 thirty. Okay, yeah. so yeah. thank you all. And if you've got outstanding pledges, we'd love it if you get yeah. them. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good thought. We project how long it'll last. I mean, because just, just, just an idea. idea. Well, so no. well. Or do you say how long it's going to last? Well, June, July. I mean, hopefully they yeah. have an assessment increase that starts September one. Right, right. What we have now will probably not last that long. Okay. And we need to get them. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Anything else? Good. Okay, we're gonna cut off here. Can you do it on the phone?